I'm starting to get a bad reputation. People are starting to think I just search out clips of Republicans saying the most insane things and blasting them onto the internet. But that's not true. I don't do that. This stuff just happens to come up naturally in the course of looking into an issue. Like when Representative Roger Wilder III of Louisiana was pushing the elimination of lunch breaks for minors, and he said this. I think our young adults, because when I hear the word minor, I think of an eight or a nine-year-old. When I hear 16 and 17-year-old, I think of a young adult. I believe that our young adults can make decisions without a babysitter. The emancipation, emancipation age is 16. You're allowed to marry at 16. You're allowed to drive at 16. Those are all adult actions. I didn't force this dude to say anything weird. He thinks this sounds perfectly normal. I swear I'm just trying to make normal videos on issues. The goal is to spread awareness, not embarrass Republicans. That's just a happy side effect. But I don't start with the intention of making anyone look like a fool. I even show restraint sometimes. Scoff if you must, but I do. For example, when I was covering Prop 479, I found this clip and haven't published it until now. There, I'm sure there is, as the federal government for years and years have gotten more out of control and more controlling of the state since the 17th Amendment turned everything upside down in, 2000, in 1913, it's been more and more challenging. Yes, that's a state legislator bellyaching about the 17th Amendment, which allows for the direct election of senators by voters. His complaint is based on the idea that senators should be elected by state representatives, because Republican elites better understand the needs of governance than the average citizenry. Which pairs very well with the modern Republican notion that allowing people to vote is a mistake. You can see this literally anywhere when it comes to Republicans. The previous president screamed to stop counting the votes when he was momentarily ahead. The Republican Supreme Court overturned the Voting Rights Act and Shelby v. Holder. Hell, from the early 80s to 2017, the entire Republican Party was under a consent decree because the quote-unquote National Ballot Security Task Force they were running turned out to be a bunch of thugs intimidating African Americans from voting. The Republican belief that allowing people to vote is a mistake is rooted in the idea that their ideas are so fundamentally unpopular, they won't win at the ballot box. Which isn't exactly wrong. On screen is a list of a grab bag of common Republican issues, and honestly, who would ever willingly endorse any of these ideas? But that brings us to the subject of today's video, Prop 134. It's a proposition from the Republican legislature to make it harder to put constitutional amendments on the ballot through citizen petition drives. As has been established, if people were allowed to directly vote on Republican ideas without filter, Republicans would lose. So it's only natural for Republicans to want to put obstacles between people and ability to change government policy. And I want to show you the first thing, the first thing I ran across when I started researching Prop 134. It's a Republican describing the basis for his opposition to ballot measures. His approach is a bit unusual, but I have not been able to stop thinking about it since I first saw it. So in the interest of not being accused of editing anyone out of context to make them look stupid, here, in all his glory, is Arizona State Representative Austin Smith explaining his vote to put Prop 134 on the ballot this fall. In 1994, uh, Proposition 201 was led by an outside group that came to Arizona um, to ban the use of leg hold traps and fur trapping. Um, my grandfather, my mom's dad, was a professional fur trapper here in Arizona when he was a pastor. And they didn't make a lot of money by being a pastor. And so um, through generations of my family, when they came to Arizona, they were fur trappers. And that's how they survived in the wintertime, by selling the pelts to pay for things. And so this is how my grandfather was a uh, PTSD Vietnam veteran, didn't have a lot of money. Um, but he came back home and he used his trade um, to put food on the table for my grandmother and his four young daughters. Um, Proposition 201 was all the signatures were essentially collected in Maricopa County and rural Arizona. All other 14 counties were left out of this conversation. It was slammed onto the ballot. All 14 rural counties in Arizona voted against Proposition 201, but Maricopa County was the only one that voted for it. And an entire industry and heritage of people was killed in the state of Arizona. On my desk on the floor, yeah, I have a picture of my grandfather when he was in Vietnam and his best friend, Nikki Bacon, who's an Arizona Medal of Honor recipient that grew up together in my district. And they both worked together, and that's how they provided for their families in my district for many years until an outside group with nefarious purposes killed an entire industry 
and livelihood and heritage of people that was good for the conservation of this state and good for the overall health of the economy in this state. And so I'm happy to see this finally go to the ballot to revert some of those bad issues that have passed in, the, that have passed in Arizona before. With that, I vote aye. Okay, so there's a lot to get to from that clip, but let's start with Prop 201 from 1994. It is the fruit of the process for citizens to put constitutional amendments on the ballot, if they can get enough signatures. Austin put this at the heart of his argument, so let's talk about it. Prop 201 was the end game of a long fight to end a specific type of hunting, leg trapping. It was a fight that had been going on since the 80s, but this was the final blow. This proposition banned using leg traps on public lands with a ton of exemptions, including for research and pest control. The opposition to leg trapping came from a simple source. Most people viewed it as inhumane to use steel traps to lock down animals which have to wait for 24 hours or more for the hunters to show up and collect them. And by collect them, I mean put a gun to their head and blow their brains out. From a 1987 Arizona Republic interview with a trapper, to quote the trapper directly, 99.9% .9 of all animals I've ever trapped were alive when I ran the traps. They are often asleep and do not appear to be in pain. I use a little 22 caliber pistol and shoot them right in the head, real humane. They die instantly. Gosh, when you phrase it like that, it does sound real humane. Doesn't sound like a serial killer at all. But there was another very large source of opposition for leg traps. Pet owners! According to a 1983 article, there was approximately 600 to 700 incidents of dogs getting caught in these traps. Which doesn't even include cats. According to this horribly titled article from 1993, outdoor cats could be the victims of these traps too. Meowch indeed, that cat does not look happy. And that 600 to 700 incidents of dogs getting caught in traps also does not include humans. But not in the way you think. From a 1990 article, a dog owner describes the experience of freeing his dog from a trap and getting bit pretty hard by the dog. So hard, in fact, he sought medical treatment. The dog and him were both fine in the end, but that wasn't the end of the experience. He called the Arizona Game and Fish Department to complain about the trap and got charged with a crime for disturbing the trap. Because that's a crime, apparently. The charges were dropped, but I can't imagine anyone who heard these stories and viewed the trapping community favorably. Especially when the ultimate result of all this is trapping animals for fur. I actually have some rights. From the same Arizona Republic article from 1987, where that crazy guy described shooting animals in the head, he also gave us his rates. Bobcat furs brought in $200, light furred coyotes brought in $25, red coyotes $5 to $6, and gray foxes around $22. See, I'm sure the guy whose dog got injured and himself got injured freeing said dog from a leg trap probably thinks it's worth it at those rates. It's practically criminal not to be a trapper. Bringing this conversation back to Austin Smith and his fur trapping grandpa, he made the claim that his family has an extensive history with fur trapping. It goes back generations. Through generations of my family, when they came to Arizona, they were fur trappers, and that's how they survived in the wintertime, by selling the pelts to pay for things. That's a lie. Austin Smith's family doesn't have a long history of fur trapping. His grandfather didn't start trapping until the early 1980s. I know this because, you see, that 1987 article from the Arizona Republic that has that crazy quote about headshotting animals and leg traps? That article is about his grandpa, John Ehrenberg. In that article, it describes how Ehrenberg became a trapper. Ehrenberg, an Arizona native, said he has hunted and fished all his life, but began trapping only five or six years ago. Quoting Ehrenberg directly now, A friend told me about it and showed me how to set a trap. Then I went down to the trapper's supply in Mesa and bought traps and books on trapping. The first year was spent in learning, trial and error. Not to cast aspersions on the honor of Austin Smith, but it doesn't sound like a long family tradition that was handed down from father to son. It sounds like a side hustle he picked up to earn extra money for his family. Bringing us back to slightly more relevant matters, Prop 201. Prop 201 is used by Austin to justify his support for Prop 134. Maricopa County, in his narrative, is cast as the villain. It trampled on the rights of the common man in 1994, being the only county to vote for it. Everyone else said no. That was the point of the story about his grandfather and his made-up family legacy of trapping, 
Them rich city folk don't understand us simple country folks. Even when all the rural counties band together, they can't overcome the tyranny of Maricopa. All 14 rural counties in Arizona voted against Proposition 201, but Maricopa County was the only one that voted for it. And an entire industry and heritage of people was killed in the state of Arizona. And since Austin has at the very least exaggerated a great deal of his family heritage, it probably wouldn't hurt to actually look at the county-by-county county election totals. I mean, it's not like Austin lied about the results of Prop 201 to push this like he did his family heritage, did he? Of course he lied, he's a Republican. If you thought for a second he was telling the truth, you should feel bad. Always fact check Republicans, they lie all the time. Maricopa County wasn't responsible for Prop 201 passing. In fact, if you took out every vote from Maricopa County, Prop 201 still passes by a margin of 10%. 10 out of 15 counties voted for Prop 201. It was a landslide of nearly 20 points. So Austin Smith is flat out lying about Prop 201. Maricopa County didn't even have the highest percentage yes vote for Prop 201. Santa Cruz County did, the fourth smallest county in the whole state. And this isn't really a shocker. Animal leg trapping is repellent. Most non-hunters don't really care one way or the other about hunting. But trapping animals to come and later kill them seems grotesque. Also, there is the small matter of those traps occasionally entangling people and their pets, which can't have made the practice popular. Bringing this all the way back to Prop 134, you know, the subject of this video, this statement supporting Prop 134 kind of made everything click for me. Everything else made a lot more sense once I heard Austin Smith's story about his fake grandpa and Prop 201 only being passed by Maricopa County. Republicans don't like when people get to vote directly on things, and they are just going to lie about it to make it as hard as possible. That's why Austin lied about Prop 201 and his grandfather. He wanted Prop 134 to pass, so he lied about it. So what is Prop 134? And yes, this far into the video, I'm finally going to explain what Prop 134 is. Prop 134 would require a signature total of at least 15% of the votes cast in the last gubernatorial election from each of the 30 legislative districts to sign off on a petition for something to get on the ballot to become a constitutional amendment. Which is different than the current, much simpler, just 15% of the votes cast in the last gubernatorial election period, no legislative district requirement included. That is a big burden. These are geographically dispersed areas, and you have to collect 15% from each of them. It's a very tall task for anyone trying to get an amendment on the ballot to get these signatures. Getting signatures is hard, especially in rural areas where the population is spread out. Which is the point. Make it harder. The less people who get to vote on constitutional amendments put on the ballot by voters, the more Republicans get to rule unfettered by accountability. This has led to some wonderfully daffy defenses of this strike against participatory democracy. For example, Senator Kerr said this in defense of Prop 134. Our rural areas are often left out of uh, the initiative process. That's unfair. It is not right. That's a Republican senator defending Prop 134 by saying it's not fair that areas with more voters have more influence than areas with less voters, which, to be clear, is insane. Geographic areas have no inherent claim to political power other than people who live there. And even then, it's just based on the number of people who live there. But Republicans seem to believe that geographic areas should have some influence on a statewide vote, regardless of how many voters live in them. Or in the case of Maricopa County, no influence at all. Why aren't we making sure the people in each LD also have a say? That's what this bill really does. And, and the only reason I can imagine that people are upset about this bill, that Maricopa County will not be able to dictate what becomes a statewide vote. And we need to recognize that the counties outside of Maricopa matter. And this makes sure the other 14 counties matter. Okay, so you know what? Since it seems to be such a bugaboo for Republicans, I'm going to do what has never occurred to any of these damn Republicans. I'm actually going to research the question. Has Maricopa County been the only county to vote for a Citizens Initiative constitutional amendment and because of that, pass it. Because that's what they keep saying is happening, and I don't think that's true. Smith said it happened in 1994, and it didn't. 
Let's see if it has ever happened. To quote a rather famous video game channel, Hold, please. <laughs> okay, so I have gone back as far as 1948. If a citizen initiative ballot initiative passed with a greater than 60% of the vote, I didn't check the county total because there's no way it passed with just one county. The rest I did check. And you know what I ended up with? I feel pretty confident in saying that in 76 years it hasn't happened once. Not once. And probably not even before that because I didn't even find one instance of it happening. They've made up a scenario that has zero chance of happening and are trying to restrict voters based on it. So let me say, if it hasn't happened or come close to happening, maybe you shouldn't be using it in every single argument you make for passing Prop 134. All right, that took a lot of time, so let's just go to the closing. Prop 134 is an attempt to remove the right Arizonans have to direct democracy by making it harder to get constitutional amendments on the ballot by making them get a high percentage of signatures in all 30 legislative districts. And I don't know if you know this, but getting signatures is hard. I've said it a few times in this video, but it's really important to emphasize this message, that it's a really time and resource consuming effort. Which is why it won't shock you to learn that occasionally people cut corners and cheat and forge signatures. Hey, remember Austin Smith? Republican lawmaker Austin Smith has slammed Maricopa County's 2020 vote as a national disgrace and embarrassment. The political elite have locked us down, broken election laws, and blatantly violated many of our God-given rights. Now it is Smith who's accused of breaking election laws. The charge? He forged petition signatures required to get on the 2024 ballot. This court complaint says several petition sheets bear purported voter signatures that appear to have been written by the same person. Goodness, did our dear friend Representative Smith do a bit of forgery in his re-election campaign? I can't say I'm shocked. He didn't exactly strike me as the honest type. Hopefully he's learned his lesson about lying. But let's go back to the story for a second. Let's look at the lawsuit. Does that say in and for the county of Maricopa? And lower down, why is the Maricopa County Recorder listed as a defendant? Wait, 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 wait a minute. What district does Austin Smith represent? Are you kidding me? He represents Maricopa County. This whole time he's spent ranting about the effete metropolitan elite and he was one of them. That cowboy hat he has in his ridiculous legislative headshot is apparently stolen valor. I had no idea he was a city boy. Wait. How many of the Republicans who sponsored the bill that put Prop 134 on the ballot represent Maricopa County? Okay, so eight people on the ballot, one main sponsor, seven co-sponsors. So how many of them in part or whole represent Maricopa County? Jesus, seven of eight of them. Republicans, if you want Maricopa County to have less representation, just stop showing up for the legislature. That'll make sure they have a lot less representation. But that's not what you want. You don't care about Maricopa County. You don't care about rural counties. You just want to have a lot more power and voters to have a lot less input on policy. All right, all right, all right. Just remember this. Prop 134 is a naked partisan attempt by Republicans to remove power from the hands of the people. Republicans don't like that citizens can go around their stranglehold on the legislature and make policy themselves. From changing the minimum wage to marijuana legalization, redistricting, or even treatment of animals. Republicans don't like that the people have a workaround when the legislative Republicans sit on their butts and don't do anything. And Prop 134 is an attempt to make that a lot harder. So vote no on it. And don't let Republicans legalize leg traps. I'm scared they'll start trying to eat your pets. I'm History Sock, and I'll see you at the next committee meeting.